In this film, we're going to talk about CVs, control polygons, and the control cage. Let's start with a 2D sketch. I'm going to create a new sketch on this plane, and I'm just going to reorientate our view. I'm going to create a control vertex spline. I'll start by selecting three points, and I'll right click and choose Create to create the spline. I'll choose OK to complete that command. The spline curve is the green line you can see on your screens here, and it's controlled by three points. We have an end point here, we have another end point here, and we have this last control point here. This is known as a CV or control vertex. These lines here, along with this CV, are called the control polygon. These lines are often referred to as hulls, and they're two hulls making this a second degree curve. Now, we don't have much control over this curve. We can move the CV close to one end, which gives us more curvature at one end. We call this acceleration, so it's higher acceleration this end and lower acceleration where we smooth out the other, or we can move it to the other end. But if we wanted to have more curvature and more control, we can add more CVs. Let's right click over this spline. We'll choose Insert Vertex. And as I hover over the spine, you can see that Inventor is dividing this line in two and this line in two. Effectively, this is subdivision. In this case, it's subdivision of some lines, but in the T-spline section of our film, it'll be subdivision of surfaces, and it's a very important concept that you understand. So let's subdivide our control cage. So we now have four CV points, and we now have three hulls, making this a third degree curve. Now this gives us more flexibility. We can take this CV and put it close to this end to create higher curvature at this end of the spline, and we can have this CV closer to this end to create higher curvature. Or we can put them very close together in the middle. And putting them close together is going to create a higher degree of curvature towards the middle of this line, creating something that's kind of sharper. Now let's subdivide this once more. I'll right click again and choose Insert Vertex. And once again, we're dividing this line in half, this line in half, and this line in half, subdividing this shape again. And we now have three points, which gives us even more control. So we can have these three points spaced out. We could have two closer to one another or we could bring them all close to the middle. And the more points we have, the more control we have over our spline surface. Now this is 2D, but to show you how this works in 3D, I've created a control polygon cage here. Okay, we have five splines here controlling this surface, and each of these splines can be grabbed and moved. And as we grab and move these splines, we can control the amount of curvature at each point. So this spline here is similar to the curve we'll see on our T-spline surface. And the lines here, the control polygon, is similar to the control cage for our T-spline surface. So when I update this, the surface will update to suit my splines. Now let's take a look at how this concept works inside T-splines. So we can have a T-spline surface I've created with five geometries. So it's similar to the control cage I just put together for you. And each of these could be controlled by vertices or by the geometry. Now this is the smooth shape that's made kind of by lofting all those splines together, but we can see the control cage by using the toggle switch up here. So this toggles from smooth to boxy mode. And as we toggle backwards and forwards, we can see the control frame, the control polygon that's controlling this surface, or we can see the surface that's generated for manipulating those points. So let's go into boxy mode, and in boxy mode we could make an edit, so I'll right click and choose edit form, and we'll just drag this line up here, and we'll choose OK done, and we can toggle back and we can see the effect of that on our T-spline surface. Now we can also select these lines and choose edit form in the smooth mode, and we can do edits in the smooth mode as well. I'll choose done, and we can toggle into boxy mode to see if there's any problems. Now in this case you can see I've probably toggled too far and we have some overlapping surfaces. That's not a good idea, although it's fairly robust and it's created it for us, that might lead to problems later on. So it's a good idea to toggle backwards and forwards from smooth to boxy mode as you're working, just to make sure you've not built in any of these sort of non-manifold edges or edges that might cause you problems. Let's toggle back into smooth mode once more and we can see the resultant surface there. And let's say we're happy with that. 